Hello friends, this is Kevin, aka Kman1, coming at you with another episode of Sly 3, Honor Among Thieves. In the last ep- what in the world? Oh, he's reading the Thievius Raccoonus, I'm like, what in the world is Sly doing? Um, in the last episode, we framed Team Iceland for some sabotage we performed on Team Belgium's planes, and we defended our own hangar from multiple assaults by Mugshot. And in this episode, we are going to be sabotaging another team, and then we are going to be flying in our first round in the competition. Let's go ahead and get right into it. Um, and as shown in the previous episode, missions are getting a lot, lot more complicated, but I think that's ultimately for the better. All right, see that armored supply truck? It's en route to drop off Team Iceland's lucky ice sculpture for the semifinals tomorrow. I've given the drivers some bad directions, so they should be going around in circles for hours. We need you to get inside that truck, steal the sculpture, and plant some evidence implicating Team Belgium. Good thinking. Team Iceland won't be gunning for me if they think the Belgians stole their lucky hunk of ice. That's the idea. Now the first thing to do is steal one of Team Belgium's official gold lace monogrammed handkerchiefs. Murray will head inside and get one of those stodgy Belgians laughing. They're notoriously stone-faced. Then I'll move in and steal the handkerchief. Seems like getting inside that truck might be a good job for the guru. He could use some of the guards' heads to bash in the back doors. Agreed. I'll make sure he's in position. All right, so now it is time for probably my favorite segment of any mission in the entire game. And you'll see what I'm talking about in just a second. But, oh my, there is a lot of good to be found here. No Let pressure. me tell you. I... This is serious business. Historically, this is the sort of thing where I would only, I would save the branching dialogue paths for end slates. And I'm thinking about doing that, but honestly, I kind of just want to show them right now. Because there are a lot of really, really funny things right here. So, let's go with historical humor to start off. The brains of his enemy. Get it? I mean, it's more weird and gross than funny, but I, I mean, you gotta admit, it's pretty weird. Alright, and as a point of conversation, it is impossible to choose the correct path right off the bat. It's so, totally funny because I'm pretty sure you need you to pick two before it becomes available, but it might be tail. three. Come on, I'm not going to hurt you sure. Um... Anyways, that was intellectual humor right there, which is nice. And yes, physical humor is the one you're supposed to pick. And so I think I'm just going to go ahead and go for the correct path. So let's go ahead and take care of it. And so Murray is pretending to choke on his own hand, which is what's going to make this guy laugh. Um, kind of morbid, if you think about it. But hey, weirder things have happened. Make the pull while the and Belgians so, laugh. Are you sure to feel you fishing for the handkerchief? Now, we're going to be pickpocketing with Bentley, and basically when he is glowing blue is when you're going to want to pull. Um, because otherwise he will notice you and you will fail. Like the failure you are. Just kidding, you're not a failure, you're amazing, because you're watching my video. Or future Kevin, you're you're awesome. Because you're editing this or something. Nice work. I don't know. I'm talking to myself. I'm literally talking to myself. And it's it's different than normal. Guys, send help. This is not okay. Oh, man. Okay, but anyways, we are now going to be playing as the guru for a segment. But we'll never be able to swipe the ice sculpture unless we can get into that armored truck. How was just how? I agree. The back door should be its weak spot. Have a day, have a day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure the guards around here won't mind too much if you break the door down with their heads. Have a day, have a day. Yeah. Bentley set up a waypoint on the truck. Should be handy. The thing's moving pretty fast. I think the best part about Guru, in my opinion, is that even when he's in like Binocucom conversations, he doesn't have any subtitles, so you literally never know exactly what he's saying. 
which is obviously kind of the running joke with the character. But, and, uh, okay, that guy died, but it's okay. Um, and something I want to go ahead and point out that I haven't explicitly mentioned yet um, is characters besides the main three, it is impossible to actually, like, select them and play them in the field whenever you want. It's kind of unfortunate if you ask me, but I understand from a game design standpoint that they don't want you playing as the fun characters literally whenever you want. Fortunately, with the mission replay system, it's less of a concern because you can just kind of replay missions if you want to play as a certain character. Um, but yeah, anyways, ramming to this, basically, at first, it's just going to be straightforward. You just got to run at the guy. Um, but then he's going to start throwing down these bear traps, and so if you run into those, then you will have a bad time. But beyond that, you just got to find a guard and chase him down. And I was hoping there would be one nearby, but it looks like I'm going to have to branch out just a tiny little bit in order to find one. So let's go ahead and see if we can take care of that. Mr. Piggly Wiggly is going to serve as an excellent final assault pig. I was going to say assault vehicle, but he's a pig man, not a car. I don't know. I'm talking to myself. This is this is an established mechanic of Let's Play. Um, but now we are going to be playing as Sly in just a second. Once Bentley hands that over. Okay, Sly, your turn. You'll have to sprint hard to catch up. Uh, Alright, taking a sip of that drink. I think my throat is starting to get a little bit tired, but it is not ultimately a huge problem. Anyways, now we're going to be chasing down the truck in hopes of being able to get up on its back. And it is being needlessly complicated in its pathing. And let's see if we can make it from here. We can. Alright, and so, manual lockpick is manual. So... Let's go ahead and twist it back. And I messed up. And Bentley talks about there being a time limit, but I don't think there actually is one for the mission. Um, and I'm not really feeling like checking it out. So let's just go ahead and pull out the ice sculpture and put in the handkerchief. Easy. Did Sly just jump through that pipe? Oh man. This game's... This game's physics engine is just shining bright all over again. Anyways, now with the sabotage complete, let's go ahead and... And Bentley needs to apparently... Bentley apparently needs to completely completely say that before we're actually able to complete the mission. But let's go ahead and take on... I'm not going to say my least favorite part of this episode, but... Stay sharp, the, the plane I controls are. I feel like that's the best way to describe it. Be great. Um, but anyways, plane combat honestly isn't that bad, um, in spite of what I might have just said. And the big thing is, we are going to have to shoot down everyone. Like literally everyone. I'm pretty sure we need to shoot down 25 planes. Yeah, 25 planes is how many we need to shoot down. Which isn't too bad, because they each don't have very much HP. But, um... The big things you need to be concerned about, as far as controls, is R1 fires your Gatling gun. Uh, X is a boost mechanic. And, um, the left analog stick controls your, uh, what's it called? controls your direction. Also, if you press the circle button with a direction, then you can pull, like, different fancy maneuvers, but ultimately that's not something you should really be relying on in just normal gameplay. Um, I briefly mentioned it uh, at one point, but there is two-player in this game. Uh, it's all versus two-player, um, and I am looking at showing that off in the future, but uh, it is going to be a while because I don't have anyone super convenient in order to show it off with. More to come on that later, though. Um, and by plane fighting, like, you can dogfight one other person, is an option. And it's it's pretty fun, I think. Um, 
it's it's not the best multiplayer, and obviously it just feels kind of tacked on. But ultimately, it doesn't take away from the game at all. Um, and if you were to play it, you're not going to be like, oh man, I hate the game. Now. Or at least you probably aren't. You might. I don't know. You might really hate unnecessary multiplayer. But it's not like really, really problematic. It's just kind of there because they felt like it was going to be fun sort of thing. And Dimitri is giving his beautiful color commentary in the background. Um, and there's really not much of that. As far as collecting health, there are a couple places where you can actually pick up health packs, but it's pretty unreliable and for the most part you're really just going to want to be careful about it. So now we are on to the final 10, as Bentley just said, and fun fact, if two planes run into each other, um, even if you fired at them, it doesn't count as you taking them down, because you know, there's an infinite number of planes until you shoot down 25. It's kind of silly, I know, but it, there's not much you can really do about it. Um, also, something worth noting is that uh, there is a limit to how much boost you have, so if you use it too much, then you will run out of gas. But it just takes you a little bit to recharge, it's not like it's gone forever or anything like that. Fortunately, that is not the case, because chasing down some of these planes would be quite a chore without it, because I feel like you go slightly slower than them naturally, um, and if you're boosting, then you go appreciably faster than them. But, I'm not completely sure on the relative speeds, and we are down to the last four planes that we need to take down. I'm... It's just like, I don't want to make it seem like the flying is really that terrible, but there's just really not much to talk about it, and having you take down 25 planes just takes so ridiculously long. Uh, but we are down to the last two that we need to take down at this point, and so we just gotta scope them out. And especially once it's down to, like, the last few, it can be a little bit hard to find them. Um, but if you just keep on flying around in circles like this, then you probably will eventually run into them. And now we have our eyes on one of them, and we just gotta take that guy down. And we are down to the last guy, and I should probably stop shooting so that I don't waste my ammunition for when I finally do find the guy. And he's probably hiding in one of these clouds, like a jerk. Mm, where are you? Last plane. Where? Like, alright. He might be tailing me. Oh, there he is. That is one way you can take advantage of your various maneuvers, but, and we take him down. Easy as that. Competition will be Mugshot himself. We need to remove him from the competition. Here's the plan. I'll challenge him to a fist fight out in the town square. Sly, you find and lure Inspector Fox to the same place. When the two meet, the sparks are sure to fly. With some luck, the big guy will get carted off to jail, and we'll have clear skies for the final. However, the Baron won't be so easy to deal with. He commands an enormous team of flyers and has been known to bring in a squad of blimp gunships when things look grim. The answer to our problem isn't obvious, although it is potent. Behold, Lupus Gigantormus. I'll drug the beast so that the Guru will be able to ride it and take out some of the local guards, who also serve as the Baron's pilots. Obviously, the fewer enemy pilots Sly has to deal with in the finals, the better. Next, I'll hack into the aircraft control tower. If successful, I'll be able to intercept any messages the Baron might send to his gunships. Alright team, we've got all night to prepare. If we take this thing, it'll mean more than a trophy. 
Penelope is sure to join our gang. After her stellar work defending our hangar, I'm sure we'd all agree that she's a prime recruit. That Baron! He's always... I love flying. Don't go outside. Listen to me. I'm so smart. I'm the boss. My mustache is so macho. <laughs> That's pretty lame, huh? Why did the chicken cross the road to France? Because it wasn't turkey. And you see, the chicken's not a turkey or a Turk. It's a chicken, a French hen. <laughs> <laughs>